Welcome everyone to the social van Feeling Kyle sick of the bullshit So here they are, Reppin' C Plus Ready to turn every podcast to dust So sit down and shut the fuck up Cause when and now, fuck your couch Welcome everybody to the social van Yeah Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Kyle Martinez Bahi for the Social Vent Reboot Podcast. And if you hear a little voice in the background, that is my daughter. Um, say hi. Hi. Say what's up, y'all. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have a very special episode for you today. Um, as you saw on the, 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 the title and everything like that, it says the pilot. And what we're doing right now is is we're going back in time to the very first episode we have ever done of the show, <laughs> dumbass, the Social Vent Reboot Podcast, when it was just the Social Vent Podcast, and we recorded all of this on a phone. Yeah, everything we have done up to a certain point has been on my phone. And I would take it, I would take that audio, I would slap it onto Audacity, I would uh, mess with the things there. I went back and listened, you know, a lot of that stuff doesn't sound too bad at all. You know, sometimes when we're driving in the car, it sounds really terrible when we're just out and about. But that's just the way mics, you know, work, you know, they're catching all types of noises, you know. But going back to this episode, I need you to understand something. We, when we started this, we didn't know we were going to end up here because we stopped for a good, I would say, a few, few months, just months, we just stopped. And uh, Jimbo, of course, always gets the praise from us. So we're always just like Jimbo because he re-sparked the love uh, of what we wanted to do with this show. And he was the one that was just like, dude, you guys don't put everybody was like, where's the podcast? Where's the podcast? Where's wrestling junkies and this and that? So we thought this week would be a really cool just to sit down. Take your shoes off and let's listen to Kyle and Phil from January of 2017 recorded in a car um, because we're like, this is the studio. Now we actually have a studio (laughs) and we have somebody that actually helps us record today. I'm doing this on my own, but we uh, have somebody and his name is Matias and he's fucking he's awesome. He's really, really awesome. And he's making us. 10 times better than we are the only reason why he's not here with me right now is because he's uh at a con and he's doing his own thing so i was just like you know what this week let's 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 show some let's let's take a journey into the past you know so gonna play for you real quick the the full entire episode of episode one that's never seen the light of day we even say episode one um, when we started loading the podcast, I completely skipped over. I thought I did upload episode one. And so when I was going through all my files and stuff, I was like, what is this? And I listen, and you hear me. Hi, my name is Kyle Martinez Bahi and my homie Phil, blah, blah, blah. You know, <laughs> this is before, um, Nerd Off. This is before, um, 10 Minutes on Broadway. This is when, uh, Wrestling Junkies was almost a thing. Well, it was slowly becoming a thing. This was also before. This is before all our segments, double barrel news. This is us just freestyling off the cusp, and we even tell you what the show was originally and gonna be. Just two two guys in a car, you know, waiting for the cops to roll up on us. Um, but I'm I'm really proud of it. I after going back and listening to it, it's a really fun show. Uh. That's why I'm really excited just to just to hear your opinions and thoughts in the comments. And uh, yeah, let's not waste any time. Let's do it. And uh, hold on. Sorry. <laughs> Matias going to be like, put your damn phone away and put it on airplane mode. You son of a bitch. That's what he's going to tell me. Because, of course, I'm always on my phone. And, of course, when you're recording, you shouldn't have your phone on airplane mode. Yeah, but uh, I have to play this just because if we're going to do this, we're going to do this right. Okay? Yeah. We're going to do this the right way. Uh, let me see. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I sound very unprofessional right now. But we're definitely going to go to the past. 
Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Kyle Martinez Bahi and this is the Social Vent Podcast, episode one. And this is hosted by me and my best friend, my motherfucking homie, my road dog. Hey, hey. Philip Anthony Magania, aka Big Daddy from KJAC. 1680, but it's no longer 1680 AM. It is, I have no fucking clue, but we ain't doing it for that shit. I'm telling you, and this <laughs> this podcast is, uh, it's going to be something beautiful in a sense. I, mean, I don't want to be all like, you know, like, all like oh, it's going to be the greatest thing you fucking ever hear, but it's going to be something that's going to be for you, the listener. We are, we're regular guys. We, you know, we joke, we laugh, we talk. Cuss and, and carry on. Cuss and carry on. We <laughs> fucking hate people. You know, it's, it's, this is a, a show that, the like, no topic is off the table. None. None. We're going to talk comic books, movies. We're going to talk life stories. You know, we're going to talk about shit that makes us laugh. We're going to talk about people who fucking piss us off. We're going to talk about sex. Yeah. Oh, but we're going to talk about sex. And God damn it. I've been on a roll lately. I'm telling I've, you. I've actually been fucking lately. I'm like, I, I know. Yeah. I know. You've been telling me. I feel good. You know, I mean, yes. I've been, I ain't gonna lie. I've been doing, I'm a fucking whore right now. <laughs> and I'm gonna continue to be a motherfucking whore. And. But ladies, 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 <laughs> ladies, if, if any ladies are listening, Big Daddy is here. Exactly. And all, all day, you, every day. All you gotta do is hit us up on the Facebook or the Twitter or anything and Big Daddy will call you. You better believe that. But yeah, you better like, be single though. <laughs> Your punk ass better be single because if you call me, or say for me to call you, and if you have a fucking man, I'm gonna drop kick you. Right? <laughs> I, seriously, I'm gonna fucking drop kick you. I've seen it. I've seen <laughs> it. He has seen it. I have drop kick <laughs> girls before who have punk ass boyfriends who punk they, ass. They, they call me. Oh, let's go do something. You're so cool. And then next thing you know, here comes a fucking boyfriend. Boom! <laughs> drop kick. Muff, not not the guy, her. Yeah, the girl. Exactly. <laughs> I, shit, because that, that's some, that's some foul shit. That is some foul shit. Yeah, you're, you're supposed to be talking about your single. You want to play. You want to fuck. Let's fuck. Well, but, you know, it, it it goes to that. You know, I know certain women out there don't want to be called a cock tease, but there's a lot of them out. There's there. a lot of motherfucking cock teases out there. Oh, you know, we at any work. Any job we've done, you've seen a cock tease come through, and they'll be like, hey, you like, bitch, you ain't giving me All shit. All kinds of ass. They got them jeans on. But you know what? The, the cock teases I hate are the girls who don't bother hiding it. The ones in the little shorts, the little tops and all that stuff. Me, I'm old school. If you got a, ladies, if, you, if you're wearing jeans, a t-shirt, and you can kind of see what's going on through all that, oh, that's, now that, that's a good tease. <laughs> that, that's not it's, not it's not a cock tease that's a good tease because we get to like mentally strip you and every well, article clothing that we get to take off we're fucking you <laughs> we're, we're fucking you. we're fucking we're we're, we're, we're stroking every but, but crevice <laughs> this isn't this isn't a creeper status either it, it we're, we're being sensual we got bruno mars in our head playing in the background versace on the floor you know we we're being respectful, so don't think of it as a creep. No, no, he, no, he he has Bruno Mars. Me, I got Willie D and Scarface oh and, and the Ghetto Boys. In well, my head. I, I guess <laughs> I, I guess I'm just that sensitive. I'm like, I got that Versace on the floor. I'm like, oh, I can't even, I can't uh, afford uh, uh, I, I no. can't afford Versace, but I'm thinking about it. <laughs> no, uh, like Willie D said, <laughs> don't say I didn't warn you about playing that whole shit. Nine <laughs> times out of ten, it's a bitch. <laughs> Oh, some ghetto boys. Oh, Hell yeah. Yes. Man, you know, I was thinking about it today, actually. Music is not music anymore. Like, hip-hop in general. Fuck hip-hop. You know what? I know I can't say hip-hop, fuck hip-hop, because I am I I love hip-hop. But like you said, the shit that's out today, what is it? Yeah, you know, and I it, what I really think about it is you... Hip-hop is... Hip-hop to me, when I hear hip-hop, I think of... Uh, Ghetto boys, you know. I think of Run DMC. Yes, I think the I think of, yeah, I think of that culture. But I, I I feel like today's rap or hip hop or whatever they want to clarify it as needs a new name. Crap. What everyone else calls, it. I call it crap. Yeah. Because it doesn't. It's not rhyming. Every song that starts off with uh, and then, 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 you know what? That's bullshit. Well, you know, it, it goes to like every time I hear someone, I was like, I'm in the hundred, I'm in the, I'm in the, I'm in the, I'm in the, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about, man? I go, exactly. 
uh, you know, and that that's my biggest problem with hip hop. I'm using my, the quotations there. Um, is that there's no meaning, there's no feeling. It's a, it's either about money, money, bitches, fucking. bitches. Even though that's what in the '90s, like some gang, that's what gangster rap was about. But yeah. it was about the hustle. Yes, it was about getting that money and making it for yourself and saying fuck the system and being and being conscious about it. And it, and hip hop just didn't stay with within you know so the no, black culture as they say. You had Rage Against the Machine. You had a Centerline. You had uh, you, you know what, what the hell was that other band? Nookie. What was the song? Oh, what? Limp Biscuit. Limp, Limp Biscuit. You had Limp Biscuit. You had motherfucking Corn. Oh yeah. I liked I liked some good corn. And they they all they all came together to talk about you know not only social issues but their hustle. But like my boy says, it's all about stupid shit nowadays. It, it's it's about biting. And if to all you old schoolers out there, and even some of you new folks, some of y'all know what biting is. Biting is something that you do when you emulate someone else's style. And back then in old school hip hop, you didn't do that. But these fuckers bite like no other. Well, you know, and this is <laughs> th- this is why I really don't listen to radio anymore. Um, you know me; I'm a juggalo. Yes. Like, for a lot of everybody that doesn't know out there, that's essentially like a huge fucking hard on fan for Insane Clown Posse. But for me, juggalo means much more than that. It's sort of a religion, but that's the type of music I listen to. But I do go further and deeper for any people who know Atmosphere, Mac Lethal, um, you know, fucking Tech Nine, you know, that just that underground shit that no one else is listening to because it is 10 times better. And these guys are on the hustle. But going back to what's on the radio, like Drake, I, I. Father fuck him. I'm not gonna say mother fuck him because he probably loves his mama, but father fuck him. He's, ooh. Yeah, you I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know, I, for me, like, there's a couple songs out there. I'm like, hey, that's catchy. But then at the end of the day, I'm just like, this guy is the greatest rapper right now in the in the eyes of the mainstream media. Fuck no. And I know. And I'm glad it's mainstream. Because mainstream can keep that shit. They well, can they can keep it. You know, and, and I know this this next rapper I'm gonna talk about, you don't like, but you know you have that certain respect aspect. Eminem. He is in the the, the pulp, you know, culture. He is in the forefront of uh, you know, of everything. But that dude he he he, he is, knows his shit. He's fucking he talented. Knows, he knows his shit. I, I yeah. Now nah, I'm gonna lie. I'm not the biggest Eminem fan, and it goes back to me thinking, that, okay, where do all these white folks come into the goddamn rap game? But there are some white folks out there who can rap their ass off, and Ritz? I give a, and I give a much prop. Yep, Ritz. My son, my son just recently turned me on to Ritz. I like I like him. Beastie Boys, Beastie Boys first came out. I was like, who are these motherfuckers? Who the hell do they think they are? Well, well, funny thing about that is I remember I heard a story about the Beastie Boys when they first, first, first came out that they, the their manager um, made them go out in Kango hats and the, yeah, and, and you remember, you remember hilarious. hearing about that? Yes, yeah, with the gold, they look like um, Run DMC. Crush Groove. Yeah. yeah he, that old school Yeah, they, they, they came out looking, not like Run DMC, but they came out with the Kango hats and this and that, trying to look like some wannabes and then they got booed off the fucking stage. They got booed. Yeah, then I think that's when it kind of just changed. And I think what hip hop really became was like, you got to find your own voice. Your own voice, your own niche. You got to find what works for you. And the BC Boys were the ones who started it. Yeah, for me, you know, you know I rap. Yes. And I'm, I'm still trying to get into the, the game per se. I've done a few songs. I've done a few albums. But for me, you know, I'm still trying to find my voice. I, I enjoy the wicked shit and what... That turns out to be is like it's a genre called horrorcore. I like talking about murder and death and talking, giving a story per sense. But I also just like rapping, you know, just just them bars that are gonna slice somebody in half and or fuck somebody's eardrums to the point that they're like, <laughs> ah man, I can't get into the game. But that's how I felt like when I first heard Eminem. You know, I was like, oh my god, I, I shouldn't even get into hip hop. This guy, you know, he ain't going to leave any of the cake left. No, he cuz he came out swinging. He came out talking about a lot of things was that that were deeply on his mind. You know, same thing like I said, a lot of black folks are like, "Who's this white boy think who who, who he is trying to get into, into our shit?" But not only did he get into it, he blew it up. Uh, but it's 
good thing about Eminem, that, that the whole cross culture thing, everyone started embracing him. And the more that he rapped, the more shit that he talked, the more stuff that he just did not give a fuck about, that he rapped about women. Well, women, he bagged on his mom. <laughs> yeah. And he got well, sued for it. <laughs> well, that, well, that's why my dad doesn't like him. Hey, it's funny. My dad's one of those people who's like, oh, you disrespect your mom? Fuck you. You know, you know, he's like, that was it. I remember, uh, this, this is a cool, funny story about Eminem. When Eminem first started coming out, uh, this is when I got into hip hop because my uncle, who's a DJ in Phoenix, his name is DJ Reflection, and um, he was getting me into the hip hop game, like mm-hmm. Notorious and Tupac. and But Eminem came out, and that's what really stood out to me. And so, but my mom, ooh, she, she would not let me listen to explicit lyrics like my first tape cassette was kid rock i was so excited but we went to kmart it was the tape cassette and she made sure that it was the edited version <laughs> and so with yeah, that big old black bar on there that yeah, said just, it too uh, it's like, no fuck you edit it <laughs> and you know and i remember this is when um d uh, cd cd burning was becoming a big deal yes um but my uncle bought one he like he he just he hustled his ass off. He went and bought himself one so he can get his own music off Napster and shit like that. But yeah, like one day he said he came over to the house. He's like, "Hey man, come here." And I was like, "What's up?" And he goes, "Here, here's the disc." I was like, "What is this?" He goes, "It's the Marshall Mathers LP." I'm like, "Holy fuck, are you serious?" Yeah, I was like, "It's not edited, right?" And he goes, "No, it's parental advisory." I'm like, "Oh shit!" He goes, "Don't you tell your mom." <laughs> <laughs> you know? And man, I swear to God, I'm like, I'm I'm in the corner like a little girl, headphones in. I'm like, ah, "This guy said bitch." And you know, I'm sitting there just like, oh, he said he's going to fucking kill this bitch, you know? And then I'm like, your mom's like, what did you say? Uh, this is Backstreet Boys. <laughs> no, good damn well, Backstreet Boys are not doing no damn cussing. <laughs> They're getting deeper on this album as they go, you know? <laughs> and, you know, then it just tried to transcend, and my uncle was just sneaking me. CDs at a time. I got Jay Z. I got uh, Notorious B.I.G. I just got some really cool, dope shit. And then as I progressed, you know, Eminem was like the flagship of my of, of loving hip hop. And then it kind of transcend um, into. You remember when Eminem had that beef with ICP? Yes, okay. I do. That, that now that I remember the the battles and the shit talking that went back and forth between both of them. Oh man! Oh man! And before, that was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and before then, you know, I knew of ICP, and I knew. I, I remember like the first time I heard them, I went to Fat Camp where my mom threw me because you know she's like, "You're a chubby little motherfucker. You didn't even go to Fat Camp." <laughs> but I remember cruising oh, on the. Yeah. You never told. You never told me. About I never that. told you that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I I, uh, I went to Fat camp pretty much and it was called the, it was the pathways program or some shit like that it was on the reservation and my mom told me like oh guess what you're gonna go to summer camp and blah 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 you know and i got i got super stoked you know because i i was kind of like i was always glued to the tv and i always saw summer camp and i always saw how much these kids had fun and stuff like that so i heard that i'm going to summer camp and then it didn't really transcend until like we got our first meal like they like when we when we went in they go they're like all right guys you know after our activities we're gonna go in and get our food and blah blah, blah for lunch and we go in for lunch and they give us this little like tr- like a uh, paper little, little, little tray and shit, little like tray and they're like tray. like like this and I'm like wait what's this they're like oh well you know it's for your weight problem blah blah, blah. I'm like wait what and, you know it's like and then I found out and then the kids are like yeah we in fat camp uh, I'm like wait a minute what you know <laughs> like oh what the fuck am I what's my Snickers that was my fucking ding dongs yeah, man fuck, fuck your couch give me give me a fucking candy bar or something but going back <laughs> going back to that you know it, it was just one of those things like after we got done with the camp and cruising on the bus I remember this one dude like this, this kid like no one wanted to be around um, he I sat by him and he was like yo man he goes you want to hear some some crazy stuff? I says, yeah, sure, why not? So he played his little tape player for me and gave me headphones, and it was Insane Clown Posse's Carnival of Carnage. It's the first Joker card of the series. And so that's when I finally, you know, I, I heard of them at that point. But when, fast forward to the Eminem ICP beef, man, I was all pro Eminem. I was like, man, fuck those guys, you know. It's Eminem, Eminem, you know, Detroit, <laughs> D12, you know. So, but then... It, it just kind of just like teetle toddled along and then you know I and then I was just like you know what I need to open my mind and I think this is what was dope about 
me, I don't want to ride my own dick, but I'm just saying, like, my mom. Ma- yeah, exactly. That would hurt. <laughs> that, that would hurt big, like, just a just tip, I'm telling you. But, it, it, you know, I think my mom taught me that as, as a kid. Is like, you know, you can't be closed-minded, you know. And so, like, one day, like, my uncle took me to, to um, to, uh, what do you call it? To the city, to the town or whatever, to get a CD. He said, I can, he's going to buy me a CD. And I remember the Wraith came out, San Clown Posse's last and sixth Joker card. And this was back in 2002. And I remember I was like, you know what? I, I want that. Like, it just appealed to me, to the cover, to the CD, just the way it looked. And I remember just going home and, man, I'll tell you, dude, it was like a religious fucking experience. It, it like, it grabbed my soul. And it just was like, you're a fucking juggalo. And I'm like, I'm a juggalo. God damn it. You know. <laughs> you, you, you even got the tattoo to prove yeah, it. Yeah, man. I got the tattoos to prove it. And I've been a juggalo since then. You know. And then I still love Eminem. But my love for ICP and this and that have grown tenfold because of that day. Because I went to Farmington, New Mexico. Went to the Hastings. And my mom. Not my mom. My uncle bought me the uh, insane clown posse is the Wraith. And from then on, it was just fucking crazy. And it's just like, I don't think music has that appeal anymore. You can't no, it go, doesn't. You can't go buy a Drake album and be like, holy shit, I had a religious experience from that. No, it's just like, all right, where's the hits? Skip, skip, skip. Oh, there's the hit song. That's all I wanted to hear. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. It, it's funny. Your, your, your generation, your guys' music, vastly different from my generation. I grew up, I was there for the first... Ice T album, the very first Ryan Pays, uh, his yeah, his very first, the very is, is considered the very first um, gangster rap album. It's not NWA. It's not it's not NWA straight out of Compton. It's Ice T's uh, Ryan Pays, and it's the first time we heard cussing, fuck this, fuck that, fuck the police, bitches, hoes, everything. They talked about stuff that was on the street. So if any of you saw Straight Out of Compton, yeah, during that time, that's how it was. There was a huge racial and generational gap, and it's always, it always seems like that when it comes to generations in music. There's a there's a gap that we can't necessarily bridge, but we can try to understand. And with with my generation, you know, the whole gangster rap, but before that, you know, we had you no know, the new Jack Swing era. You know, that was you no know, bands like Guy, I'll Be Sure. You know, you you had the the era I, I call it the era of love because plus what was it called the afrocentric the afrocentric area era there was a uh, shit de la soul uh uh brand nubians that was a uh, uh buster rhymes group and the, the, the only one who busted out of that whole <laughs> who busted out a whole damn group he was he was he was the mad rhymer people wanted to work with him and he blew up then it comes like i said gangster rap which buried from 1987 until pretty much until like the early 2000s, gangster rap buried R&B. People don't believe it, yeah, but yeah, it no, did. I can agree they, with that. they, you know, prior, no, they were dropping labels left. I mean, like labels. Excuse me. Yeah, labels were dropping artists left and right for gangster rap because that was a new money. That was a but. It also started a shit ton of revolution. Problems. It did. It started. It started revolution, but the problems came when white folks they could they couldn't keep their kids on their side of the fence no more. They wanted to see what was up with us. All of a sudden, white kids were trying to be more gangster than us. White kids were shouting "fuck the police" louder than us. Yeah, and it was here in Flagstaff. It was interesting. Because you you had a lot of kids out there in Continental, which is the well-to-do part, out there in Cheshire, which is another well-to-do part. They were coming on South Side, our side of town, but we but we we chased them off. We told them, you know what, this is what we do. Your parents have something planned for you, good for you. Stay in your lane, do your thing. We can still be friends, just stay in your lane. You know, this is stuff that you don't want to fuck with. This is not cool. If we if we had you know a lot, well a lot of us have backgrounds we're living in you know the streets poverty and stuff like that we wish that we could have some of the lifestyle which you know some some of the white folks had you know two parents house uh, food on the table sometimes I mean I ain't gonna lie I, I can name I can name the nights I, I went to bed hungry <laughs> it sucked yeah, you <laughs> it, know, it really fucking sucked and I think that's why 
you know, you know, and, and you know, it's one of those things. I grew up, I was born and raised in Shiprock, New Mexico, a little town on the reservation. It, it wasn't anything. It wasn't much. You know, I we grew up poor too, but you know, we we my mom and my mom did what she could. My dad did what he could, and you know, at times they would split up. This and that, but you know, it, it was always those things. Like I think that's why rap became hip hop became appealing to me is because it's like, man, these guys are talking about the struggle of just trying to make it in this life, and you know, exactly, and trying to understand like, yeah, white people have it a lot better. You know, I I never want you know, and that's the thing about living on the reservation is that hip hop is huge there, hip hop and uh, metal. Like those are like the two things that the are huge things, huh? are huge on the reservation, including being a juggalo. But what's funny about the gangster rap thing you were talking about was I didn't learn about gangster rap like hardcore, like Ice T, Ghetto Boys, you know, Above the Law, until ICP, because those were the guys they looked up to yes. when they were growing up in Detroit, and so they would always talk about it in interviews. They would always be like, "Man, Ghetto Boys is my shit." You know, you know, they, and I'd be like, who's, "Who's that?" You know, and my my uncle was more on the on the sense of like, you know, this 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 is hip hop, you know, like the Biggie and this and that, you know, and that's what I was shown to with him, like Jay Z, Ludacris, etc. You know, mm -hmm. the, and but you know, with them, I delved in mm -hmm. deeper into gangster rap, and man, ah. Some days, man, I'm cruising down the road. I'll throw on some iced tea because I just want to feel like an OG. Like I never, I'll never know that life. I'll never, you know, understand um, what transcend of him writing those lyrics. But man, just just throwing on some good fucking gangster rap just from back in the day just I, feels good. Hell yeah, it's, man. Uh, it just feels good. My library, man. Like you said, Ice T, N.W.A. Above the Law, Ghetto Boys, shit. You got DRS, which is Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. You have, and I have both volumes. The first two volumes are the Bloods versus Crip. And that came about after the Rodney King beatings when the Bloods and Crips united in the studio for a while and, and with each other to tell the police, find a new fucking enemy. Hip hop, hip hop honestly wakes people up. It really does. But it only wakes people up who choose to wake the fuck up. If you choose to be ignorant and you're in your bubble, which I know there's a lot of people, there's a lot of there's a lot of closet hip hop lovers out there, and I dealt with them all my damn life. And they'll say, "Oh, I listen to metal now. Fuck hip hop. You don't understand shit what they're saying." But they're over here like, "Fuck the police." Fuck the police. What'd you say? Nine, man. Exactly. Metallica. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Metallica. <laughs> and you know, I was like, "What the fuck did they just say?" And, you know, <laughs> go, going into that and going into music in general, you know, I, at, at that point when I discovered juggaloism is what I call it now, um, I my mind opened up. You know, I finally like like my mind was like, OK, cracking it open, throwing the seeds in of just like, you know what, you can you can be different. You can do what you want to. You can say fuck everybody and just be yourself. And I think that's what what I think that's what's missing in today's music. It it's they're all it's all the same. It's all copy and paste. Copy and paste. Exactly. Copy and paste. The beats, everything. Fucking what's that little son bitch? I see my mind I can't I don't like him so damn much I can't even think of his damn name. But he has the same beat to a lot of his damn you no know, songs he produces for people. And you know what's funny is like you saying yeah. that I, I I I can't <laughs> I you know I can't pinpoint that for you because I'm thinking of like 10 million other artists that sound like him today. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, well, it could be this guy. No, no, it could be no. That guy sounds like that guy. No, that guy sounds like that. It, and it, and that's the problem is nobody has a voice anymore. No, no one has a voice. It's even it even comes down to pop music. You know, there it's it's all the same. You know, and you know, you can always, you can always <laughs> say that for pop music, like in the eighties. Oh, 80s I got something to say about pop music. Yeah, eighties, nineties, and but and what's funny is like a lot of people out there. I love music, but I also have my days where I like to. I like pop music. You know this, for yes. In fact, he, I'll throw on Taylor Swift and shake my ass like there's no other. And I, I have seen him do it back there making pizzas. I don't and give a goddamn fuck. hot stuff. I'm I like, got oh Lady my Gaga. God. He knows that. Oh, I Lady got... Gaga. I, I can hang with Lady Gaga. Yeah. She's talking about she ain't going to have no more sex. She's tired of fucking. Bitch, nah. 
I got to hit it one time. <laughs> then you can be tired of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, I like my Backstreet Boys and this and that. And what's funny is like when I tell people this, they look at me like, man, well, I thought you were a juggalo. I thought you were fucking hard. I'm like, man, fucking hard. What do you know about being hard? It's, it's, it's called balance. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it, you got to balance that shit out. You know, and, and as much as I love ICP, I got to take a break every now and then. You know what I mean? I was like, you know I I want some country. I, I want. I want to feel like I lost something. You know. <laughs> I put on some George. <laughs> oh yeah, country will make you fucking lose yourself. I mean, it'll, country will fucking depress you. But there's also some country songs out there that, that's like hip hop. The funnier than shit is some of the songs out there just crack me up. I can't. Don't ask me which ones because I, I'll hear it, but I don't. I'll be paying attention to them. But they sound funny as shit. Oh, drinking, yeah. drinking, smoking, and. No, wreck their damn car. Yeah, well, well, country's a bunch of fucking biters, too. Yeah, you know. They they talk about the same shit over and over and over. Well, you know, it it goes to also when I was talking to somebody about country music today, and I was telling them, I was like, you know what's crazy is like, I, country singers are not the same either. They're all a bunch of pop country singers now. But back in the day, like, I look at George Strait, even though he's singing about love and losing something. I feel like that motherfucker can whoop your ass. Like, you know, like Johnny Cash, you know, Dwight Yoakam, you know, just like mm-hmm. those like those guys are like, yeah, we got the the the, the colorful hat, the big 10 gallon hat, whatever, but Oak I Ridge can, Boys, but you Alabama. Better, you better believe, motherfucker, I can out drink you. I can fucking whoop your ass and then I'll write a song right after <laughs> right after I fuck your woman too. Uh, yeah, and then then you'll be doing <laughs> then you'll be doing the honky tonk yeah, to my beat. You know, it's just like god damn. You know, <laughs> and then you'll be complaining because your ass really went down to Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right, ladies and gentlemen, just to let you know we're coming up to the to the final mark. But yes, this is the social vent. I think we did pretty awesome. I think we did too. You know, we're we're gonna we're gonna keep this the show nice and tight, and you know, for your listening pleasure, this will be hopefully every Wednesday or every Friday. We're gonna meet people too that we think are fucking interesting. We're gonna talk to people who we feel um, are just have some dope conversations with, and that's what the social vent is about. One more social vent. One more. You want to do one more? I want to do me with the movies. I've been watching a lot of shit online lately talking about why, uh, no, why are actors of color all of a sudden playing roles for white characters? White folks, I hate to tell you, y'all been whitewashing Hollywood for a long time. Cleopatra, <laughs> not white, okay? That that one stupid ass movie, the, the Gods of Whatever, that came out last year. Gods of Egypt. Gods, Gods of, of Egypt. Egypt. Not one. Egyptian role was played by <laughs> by actual Egyptian, uh, and then y'all complained about Will Smith with no Suicide Squad. Oh yeah, we talked about this. We talked yeah, about this. Yeah, don't oh. don't don't complain about this shit. We need love too. Well, you know, you know it, it, it comes down to uh, what was the big thing? You know, I think it was Gods of Egypt. I think we talked. It was about Gods of Egypt. We did. You're like, talk about you're like, there's no goddamn Egyptian in there. There's no. a whole bunch of white motherfuckers. You know, you. I understood your passion about like the white, you know, you brought the whitewashing too. And I was just like, yeah, you're, you're right. And it, it, it goes to show you that it, it's like this. Okay. Here, me being Navajo, um, wind talkers, that movie had nothing really to do about the Navajo code talkers. No, it, didn't. it was about Nick, Nick, uh, Nick Cage's bitch ass <laughs> and his hearing problem or whatever. Yeah. And they had Adam Beach, who wasn't even Navajo. He was from a different tribe, you know. And- yes, <laughs> no, no actual Navajo actors up in there except for one. I think that was I think that was Graham Green. Yeah, I, I think I, I think I, he I, was I, the only one up in there. Everyone else was from a different goddamn tribe. Even though, yes. The, the code talkers were of different native tribes. It, it, it consisted of 10 of them, uh, mo- but primarily it was Apache, Navajo, and Sioux. But who are the rest of the motherfuckers? <laughs> 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 no, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the movies, the actors in the movie. I mean, they look native, but they weren't native. If you look at the credits, no, they weren't fucking native. Well, you know, it goes it down to like, off. yeah, it goes down to like when you see like a, a movie based in China. 
and when they, they the, the story's based in China or whatever, then they're like, oh, we have a bunch of Japanese extras. Like, who thinks of that? You know, like, yeah, oh, we have a bunch of Japanese Oh, they all extras. look the same. Why not? Just roll the fucking camera. No one's going to know the difference. <laughs> yeah. And so, but, but see, at the same time, you can't mix Japanese and, and Chinese people together because they generally don't like each other. And you put them some bitches on the set together, oh, yeah, kung fu fighting. <laughs> Hong Kong fooey time, all that shit, but they, they gonna fuck each other. <laughs> fuck your fried rice. Uh huh. Fuck your fried rice. Fuck your Mugu guy. Pen. Oh, fuck no. Fuck your sushi. Exactly. Oh, no, you can't fuck the sushi. Oh, no, man, I love sushi. I, I love sushi too. <laughs> the latest whitewash movie, Ghost in the Shell. Everyone's like, see, yeah, see, I would have picked Scarlett Johansson for that role too. Man. I wouldn't have. Really? Fuck, fuck, yeah, fuck Scarlett. Well, you know, I really don't watch anime. Like, I'm slowly getting into it, but, uh, Kurosaki was a android, beautiful, Asian, Japanese looking. Yeah, for anime, yeah, she's pretty damn hot. She's pretty damn hot. For and me, I, Scarlett Johansson in a movie, I'm just like, I'm there. That that's his personal whitewash or not. <laughs> I, I see Scarlett Johansson, and I'm like, holy shit, she's gonna be fully naked in this movie. I'm there. Give me a fucking <laughs> ticket. Here's my money. I don't give a fuck. You know, and that's that that's just me personally. That's cause my like I see Scarlett Johansson on the screen, my dick gets hard. I'm like, oh I gotta Well mine too. I'm not gonna lie. I, I would I mean You, you know, know, I gotta put that shit away because I'm uh, my wife's like, What's wrong? I'm like, nothing, nothing. nothing, nothing no, 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 just, no, just no, it's, it's all good. It's all Ooh. good, baby. Hey, it's I, all good. I, 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 <laughs> I I need to go to the bathroom real quick, okay? And hey, uh, do we have a? Uh, can we do we have some money to go see Ghost in the Shell? Like, <laughs> I'll go see it by myself she, too. She'd be like, shit, <laughs> shit, motherfucker, you ain't, you ain't going by. You ain't going by yourself. He, go he, with uh, Philip. And he, then she's gonna look at you like, nah, never mind. You can't go with Philip. Nah, you can't go. That's gonna get weird. <laughs> <laughs> Skeeting on the goddamn uh, projector <laughs> on the screen, and everything. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm like, oh, Black Widow. Oh shit! Oh, oh, that's that's the way it would be too. And everybody, See, me, he he does a deep. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. I'm like, no, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, just, just <laughs> shut up! <laughs> well, oh man, well that's the social vent, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Kyle Martinez Bahi, Philip Magana. And we are going to be back for round two next week. And we might have a guest. We might not. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming this week. And, of course, you know, all the things we plugged back then. Just just, just, just take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> but the real shameless plugs. What's up? Are you watching The Office? I know. You like the office. She likes the office. Shameless plugs. Okay, as a what? Why do you keep interrupting me? All right. Shit. Hey, I'm recording. Yes, I'm not gonna show that. You like the office? You're eating s'mores. You got chocolate all over your face. Okay. Now, shameless plugs. Should I do Phil Dirty and not mention his book? Huh? Huh? Should I? Should I? Yeah. Yeah. Nah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you know, go to cplusstudios.com, as always, for all the links for Phil's book, for uh, for Dwam, when we get it all printed up. Go to YouTube. What? You want some books? Why? I, okay, you are a baby. You're a silly, silly baby. Okay, I got to end the show. Can I end the show now without you talking? When my hand goes up, your mouth goes shut, okay? Okay, I get it, okay? Monday Night Raw is about to come on. Wait, is it Monday? Is it Monday? No, it's not Monday. <laughs> well, something we're going to watch. Oh, All In, All In. <laughs> Why am I mistaking the biggest wrestling event? In it? Whatever. Okay, go to cplusstudios.com. Calm for all your C plus needs. Phil's book. Dwam, once we finally get that mofo printed. Uh, much love to Jimbo. Much love to Matias. Much love to every single person that lives listens to this show. Like, subscribe, comment on the bottom. Once you do that, uh we're gonna the word is gonna get out there. We're gonna get bigger. We're gonna get a bit more awesome, you know. C plus studios dot com and my daughter sitting here i would say the outro as i usually do but when in doubt your couch okay Peace. 
Welcome everyone to the social van Feeling Kyle sick of the bullshit So here they are, reppin' C plus Ready to turn every podcast to dust So sit down and shut the fuck up Cause when and now, fuck your couch Welcome everybody to the social van Yeah Two thousand two, The Rock versus Brock Lesnar, which is uh, our producer's uh, favorite wrestler. Which is uh, our producer's uh, favorite wrestler. Favorite wrestler. Favorite.